Greetings, everyone. I'm glad you could join me tonight for tonight's devotional. Uh, my prayer is that your family is uh, well and safe during these very uh, unpredictable and, and uh, trying times. Uh, but anyway, welcome. And uh, one thing I, I wanted to couple of, cover a couple of things uh, to share with you, just about you know things going on in the church. Uh, first of all, we'll talk about our current services. I I hope that most of you have either been able to attend in person or has been able to join us uh, through the internet. Uh, we've had a number of uh, very good services. Uh, I want to thank all the visiting ministers and especially the uh, the lay people of the church that have uh, provided messages. Uh, they've been outstanding and very timely uh, messages over the last several weeks. So we're still uh, social distancing if you haven't been able to join us. Uh, the music's good, and especially this coming week, uh, we have a very special uh, uh, vocalist that's going to join our service and uh, bless us with uh, some music. So uh, if, you, if you're able to and can attend, please uh, plan to do that. Um, <clears throat> our financials, uh, something that I know is on a, a lot of people's mind continuously, especially during these times. Uh, the contributions uh, continue to meet our budgetary requirements. So, you know, hats off to you. Uh, uh, I know that, again, that's a lot on everybody's mind. Uh, let me remind you of the ways that you can leave your contributions. Uh, we have a basket that's uh, set at the doors at the front. Uh, when you enter the gym, uh, you can place your contribution in that basket. Uh, there's a drop box outside under the drive through canopy. You can use that. Uh, you just, uh, there's online. You can go to the website and click on the online contributions tab, and you can make contributions online. Uh, or you can just uh, drop by the, uh, the office and leave them with Peggy uh, during normal business hours, uh, uh, Monday through Friday, each week. Uh, Hopefully, uh, we will have uh, more to say about uh, proposed uh, the R and R project, uh, the renovations to the uh, sanctuary in the very near future, and how you can uh, support uh, that project uh, financially. So, uh, look forward to that. That'll be a very positive uh, period in the church. Um, speak just to quickly about our pastor search efforts. Uh, uh, meetings are going on, have gone on, uh, within the deacons, uh, within the personnel committee, and then jointly between the, the deacons and personnel to uh, you know, come up with strategies on, in, in issues about uh, you know, having an effective and uh, very prayerful search for our, for our next pastor. Uh, incidentally, this, this uh, week, uh, Sunday, we will be uh, uh, having a, uh, a virtual teleconference with uh, uh, Bill Wilson, uh, who is the director of the Center for Healthy Churches out of North Carolina. Uh, we'll be talking with him about what type of services they might provide and uh, how we would move forward uh, with our search effort. Um, so be sure to be uh, continually in prayer. Uh, for the church, especially about that effort, uh, we need to be very prayerful about how we go about uh, selecting our next uh, pastor to lead uh, First Baptist Church of Williams. Um, let me move to uh, just prayers. Uh, we normally, on our Wednesday night devotionals, uh, traditionally recognize those that uh, uh, are in need of prayer. Uh, and without a list of names, just things that, as I mentioned before, that we need to pray for is the church uh, during these times, uh, that we will continue to, to uh, have a very healthy and, and uh, vibrant church, uh, that the members of our church will stay safe and unaffected by the, uh, the virus. Uh, we need to pray for the, uh, the victims of the uh, COVID, uh, those that are sick, those that are recovering, and, and unfortunately for those that have lost loved ones due to the virus. Uh, we want to remember the workers, that uh, nurses and people that work in uh, all different types of service organizations that uh, make things remain as normal as possible and uh, certainly have 
work through a lot of challenges um, in their particular jobs. Um, schools have started back. Uh, let's remember the teachers and administrators in the school system and all the kids that are getting back together that they would um, remain safe and uh, have a very productive return to their to, to their educational uh, pursuits. Uh, but also we need to remember our country, uh, our leadership, uh, very, very trying times uh, in it's been experienced in many cities. You know, let's pray for wisdom and calm as we uh, uh, go forward uh, that, uh, you know, we will uh, improve things that uh, that the people feel like have been uh, not worked out like they, they felt like they need to. Let me uh, uh, say a quick prayer. What I will do is just give pause just for a second to allow you to uh, ponder these things that, and pray for your own prayer for the things that we've mentioned. And then I will close it real, with a real quick prayer. Let's bow our heads. Lord, we would ask you to bless our time together, bless those that are, are tuned in and those of our church and community. Uh, we ask uh, for strength and your continued uh, hand of grace during these very trying times. Um, we ask these things in your name. Amen. Tonight, uh, uh, I'm going to be reading uh, our my devotional is on Ecclesiastes uh, 3, 1 through 8. Uh, and the way I decided to, to approach that or, or to use that as my devotional, uh, just last week, Diane and I were traveling, um, celebrating actually 50 years together. Uh, Diane usually, when we travel, she reads and I drive. So it's a lot of time, it's very lonesome windshield time for me, but uh, she is a outstanding companion to be on the road with but she was reading a novel about uh, where in a chapter where a minister was you know preaching from Ecclesiastes 3 and uh, she paused and asked if uh, <clears throat> if I had selected a topic for tonight's devotional and I, I hadn't at that particular time and she read a few passages from her book and I thought that might just be the right thing to uh, to talk about tonight um, so let me uh, uh, go ahead and, uh, and and read to you those verses of Scripture. Now this is Ecclesiastes uh, chapter 3, 1 through 8. For everything there is a season, and a time for every matter under heaven. A time to be born, a time to die. A time to plant, a time to pluck up what is planted. A time to kill, and a time to heal. A time to break down and a time to build up. A time to weep and a time to laugh. A time to mourn and a time to dance. A time to throw away stones and a time to gather stones together. A time to embrace and a time to refrain from embracing. A time to seek and a time to lose. A time to keep and a time to throw away. A time to tear and a time to sow. Uh, a time to keep silence and a time to speak, a time to love and a time to hate, a time for war and a time for peace. I know most everybody is very familiar with those passages. We've heard a lot of sermons over the years about that, but I thought it was very uh, uh, timely and reflective of, of things that we deal with every day and things that we, you know, uh, as I mentioned later, that, you know, we can certainly relate to that within our, our church environment. To, every, to everything there is a season. These words are a great source of comfort and help us understand the ebb and flows of life uh, are natural. Uh, that's that we're not alone in the difficulties we encounter. In a publication called uh, Your Questions, Biblical Answers, in this passage Solomon says there is time for every matter in life. He illustrates this truth by posing opposites, 14 pairs of contrasting activities as examples 
of how life is comprised of various seasons. First, timing of activities is important. Taking of someone's life is generally considered evil and a crime, but may change during time of war when defending countries, uh, one's country can be considered a noble act. Dancing may be appropriate during celebrations, but not appropriate for a funeral. Of course, nowadays we you know, look at funerals as a celebration of life, but maybe dancing still not appropriate for those times. Actions and timing are important to God. There are seasons in which certain pursuits are appointed by God. His plan for life involves a variety of experiences and activities. Weeping may be part of life, but life is not all weeping. Laughter has a place too. <clears throat> Construction is good in its time, but sometimes destruction is necessary. A key to, to this passage is found a few verses later. He has made everything beautiful in its time. The proper activity at the right time brings about God's purpose. The proper, <clears throat> just say that again, the proper activity at the right time brings about God's purpose. Sometimes this timing and activity seems like chaos, like looking at a tapestry from the back. But the maker of the tapestry has a wise purpose for the placement of each thread. You could say we find ourselves uh, in these seasons today at Williams. A time to break down and a time to build up. Sometimes we carry around baggage feelings that we need to get in the open and a lot of that has taken place already. But after, afterwards we need to start the rebuilding process, rebuilding of relationships and working together. A time to keep and a time to throw away. Uh, we all tend to hang on to things that are of no value any longer and look, look backwards about in our past and what uh, uh, things have caused us to uh, be uncomfortable or to uh, be unhappy. A time to heal. We, we certainly, that it is time for us to heal. A time to embrace, a time for silence, and a time to speak. Great wisdom is found in Proverbs 15 about how to speak. A soft answer turns away wrath, but harsh words stirs up anger. A time to love, and a time for peace. In a devotion written by Alexis Newton, I found this perspective. God acknowledges that we experience seasons of great joy or great pain. The beautiful thing of all of this is none of these seasons uh, of experience is wasted. It's in Ecclesiastes 3.11. God can use everything we experience and make it beautiful. Here are a few wonderful promises to remember in our hard seasons. In James 1, 2 through 4, count it all joy, my brothers, when you meet trials of various kinds, for you know that the testing of your faith produces steadfastness. And let the steadfastness fastness have its full effect, that you may be perfect and complete, lacking in nothing. In Genesis 5:20, it simply says, What was meant for evil, God meant for good. In Peter, 1 Peter 5.10, And after you have suffered a little while, the God of all grace, who has called you to his eternal glory in Christ, will himself restore, confirm, strengthen, and establish you. In John 16.33, we find this, I have said these things to you, that in me you have peace. In the world you will have tribulation. But take heart, I have overcome the world. People are to accept each day as a gift from the hand of God. Ecclesiastes explains it is because God has a reason and a time for all things. We may not know God's timing, but we are called to enjoy life in the present and trust God is in control. Our activity in this world is meaningful 
as we rely on his wisdom, his timing, and his goodness. Let's pray. Our God, we ask your guidance and we ask for wisdom as we face these challenges of the world and these different seasons of our lives, whether they be challenging or they be times for celebration. We ask that you be with this church and our community as we move forward. We ask these things in thy name. Amen. Y'all have a good evening, and, and again, thank you for joining me.